Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Kristen Donnelly, and I'm one of the good doctors of Abbey Research. And welcome to this edition of Abbey Research Reads, where I'm going to be talking about the book Queer, A Graphic History by Meg John Barker and Jewel Scheel. Um, Activist, academic Meg John Barker and cartoonist Jewel Scheel illuminate the histories of queer thought and LGBTQ plus action in this groundbreaking book. So when I first saw that it was an illustrated history, I can't lie, I thought that it was going to be a little bit more narrative than it is. So let me tell you right now that it is not. This book is much like a lot of other history books or sociological theory books. Sorry, the focus is going really weird. There we go. Um, where you can see that there's like a topic at the top and then, a, and then um, you know, explanations. The difference here is that there are the cartoons to help people who maybe think more visually into understanding some of the, of the things. So we have Michel Foucault, we have Judith Butler. So we've got some of the theories in there. We've got Stonewall and some of the, the histories of the movement. We've got the theories. In terms of your one-stop shop of queer theory and Western queer history. Um, this is a really good, really good book. It's dense. To me, it's not one that you can sit and read like I would any other graphic novel or a graphic thing. It's, it's more even dense than some of the histories I've read. And some of that might be because it is just straight theory and then, vis and then a visual illustration. So there's not a lot of unpacking or anecdotes or stories that sometimes allow me to hook my brain into what's happening differently. Now I've taught a lot of these theories. I've taught a lot of these theorists. And there was times where I even felt a little bit overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information. That being said, there are authors and books that are not designed to be read cover to cover. They're designed to be more encyclopedic knowledge. They're designed to be things you dip in and out of. And if, if that was the intent with this particular book, then it's genius. It's done its job, knocks it out of the park. It's a great book to have on your shelf and dip in and out of. It's a great thing to get bite-sized information. I mean, they've got references. The theories are on track. It's really, really well-researched. The illustrations are beautiful and very, very enticing. Great addition to anybody whose shelf needs to have a little bit more queer theory and queer history in it. There are other books that we'll be talking about throughout Pride Month that are a little bit more potentially accessible, quickly accessible, a little bit more narrative. Obviously, memoirs are always, always more narrative than, uh, than a theory book. Um, but even in the, in the history side, there's some stuff that we'll be recommending that might be a little bit more accessible to a wider number of folks. I say that. I'm a visual learner, but not in the way that this book allows for. So if you have read this book and you love it and the way it employs visualization really works for you, we're big believers in pedagogical um, inclusivity here, how everyone learns. I love that this exists for people who learn this way. Um, if you've read this book and gotten a ton of value out of it, I'd love to know that. Like I said, I think it's really, really value driven and really great. It just wasn't quite as quite as accessible to me and my learning style as other things are that are either more narrative graphic things or are more prose driven books. This interesting hybrid of both didn't wasn't quite as successful for me personally as I wish it would have. However, this book still gets a wholehearted recommendation for the simple fact that I don't know anything else like it exists. And it's a great resource to have on yourself. Do you need a two paragraph explanation of gender theory? Do you want a one paragraph explanation of who Michel Foucault was? Fantastic, this book has you. So in a way, instead of calling it a graphic history, I probably would have called it a graphic encyclopedia. A um, little bit of a different vibe because it's not narrative, it's not constructed narratively as, as much as I, as I, as I kind of wish it was. So while this sounds maybe like a muddied review, I don't, I don't intend it to be that way. I hope that you can hear that I really recommend it and I think it's great, but just know what it is and treat it for what it wants to be. Uh, and I think you'll get a lot of success and knowledge and really rich understandings out of queer, a graphic history. So that's it for me for this Abbey Research Reads review, and we'll see you next time here on the YouTube channel.